Okay, and welcome again to EDL 689, Review of Educational Leadership Literature. I wanted to go over the syllabus with you, mainly for the folks that aren't going to be here. We'll actually spend some time going through this at the beginning of class on Wednesday, the 9th of September. But for those folks that may not be able to join us, and I know there's at least one person who is going to be unable to attend that first class, I did want to provide a bit of an overview for this in addition to meeting with them individually. So just to go through this kind of quickly, essentially, you know, up here up the, the top, we've got um, the regular contact information that you've got. Uh, you can see my office is located in 11 Oakview, which is as you walk in through the main door, if you go through the double doors on your left hand side, my office is the first one on the left. Um, I'm in my office uh, in and out throughout the week, but I'll always be there from 1 to 4 on Wednesdays, essentially the time leading up to our class. And by all means, uh, feel free to make an appointment with me. Um, I apologize if you're hearing a little bit of noise in the background. I'm actually at a coffee shop uh, recording this because this is, uh, it seems, one of our warmer September days thus far. So I figured I'd come out and um, get out of the house for a little bit. Anyway. Um, so uh, feel free to make an appointment with me otherwise and um, we don't necessarily have to meet in the office uh, just so you know I live up in the Hamden area uh, so if it is more convenient for us to meet off of campus particularly somewhere between where you are and uh, where I am I'm all you know I've got no problem meeting you in a coffee shop somewhere uh, and going over things if it saves you some time on a drive down to Oakview um, because it also saves me some time when I drive down to Oakview. So I'm very flexible in that respect. The other thing you'll notice is I've got both my cell phone and my Skype ID here. Um, and one of the things that I'll be honest with you and say that my background is in educational technology. So um, I'm very quick to answer email. Uh, feel free to call or text me on my uh, cell phone. As well, if you do have a Skype account, make sure you add me there because if you see that I'm online, it means I'm sitting in front of my computer. And that's probably the quickest way of getting a hold of me is uh, contacting me through that. So, um, looking at the rest, you've got you know the typical course description that you've got uh, that you'd see for most courses, uh, course outcomes. I did want to talk a little bit about the research course sequence. Now, you guys are the second group of students, the second cohort of students that are going through this research sequence, and. Um, it's a new sequence for us. We've always had a thesis as part of the sixth year, but one of the things that we decided to do about a year and a half ago, uh, the 092 program historically has not had an internship. They've had a practicum instead, whereas the sixth year program has actually had two internships. Uh, so what we've done in the past year and a half is we've actually eliminated the practicum and we have essentially moved one of the two internships into the 092 program to essentially replace the practicum. What that meant was that we had a new course that needed to be offered in the sixth year to have the full five courses and one of the things that we've noticed um, over the course of time is that while the thesis has been a valuable tool for our students in terms of becoming familiar with research, being a good consumer of research, as well as being able to produce some initial level, uh, entry level research, one of the things that we've noticed is that the chapter twos or the literature reviews in the thesis is from days gone by in many respects left something to be desired and, and this was a weakness that we found in the program so one of the things that we did or the thing that we did to essentially replace the second internship with was to create a review of educational literature course which is what you're doing here so if you look at this in terms of a sequence of events here essentially what you do in 689 is is you do a systematic in-depth review of the literature so essentially you're working on your chapter two of your thesis then after you've done that you move into 690 which is the educational research seminar where you learn about different research strategies different methodologies different methods of data collection and data analysis and you essentially plan out a study so you're essentially writing your chapter one and three for your thesis in that particular course now some of you 
um, depending upon how the timeline goes, may end up being able to start your thesis study near the end of 690. Some of you will have to wait until 691 before you're in a position to be able to do that. Um, 691, oops, I just jumped ahead a lot there. 691 is the thesis seminar, and that's essentially the final course in the thesis sequence. And in that is where you actually implement your study and write it up. So that's where you're writing chapters four and five for your thesis. So it's sort of broken down over a 10 to 12 month period, depending upon which semesters you end up taking these courses. I suspect by starting in the fall here now, what will happen is we'll do 690 in the spring and then either in the May intensive or in summer one, we will be doing 691. Um, so that'll probably be what we're looking at. So this is a process that you and I are going to be engaged in now, essentially for the next nine to ten and a half months, working together on this. Um, looking at the text, there are two that I've got listed here. Uh, one is required and one is recommended. Um, and you'll note that when I go down into the week-by-week uh, -week scheduling, you'll see that I list off the readings from both. Um, Recommended means just that. If you don't want to purchase it, that's entirely fine with you. You'll note that the Fink textbook is in the fourth edition. I'll be honest with you and say that there isn't a lot of difference between the third edition and the fourth edition. So if you can find the third edition on Amazon, um, you'll probably, actually not probably, you will be okay. I know I had one student who's done this course in the past that used the second edition of Fink and there were some differences that we noticed, but not enough that that individual was um, negatively affected by having the second edition. Um, similarly with Prychak or Prizak, um, that one is uh, in its fifth edition. I can tell you that the third and the fourth editions are very similar to the fifth edition. So. If you find the third or fourth edition of that one uh, available online for cheap, um, I would recommend picking up that instead of buying the newer version. So looking at the assignments that we've got, there's a uh, four or five here that we've got. Uh, the first one is a literature search strategy, which is going to build upon some of the skills that you're gaining over in the library um, in terms of being able to search through the various electronic databases that uh, we have access to here at Sacred Heart University. And um, it'll essentially describe the kind of strategy you're looking at and the results that you're getting, as well as listing off all of the things that you're finding. Um, something that we'll be doing for the first three or four weeks is um, every class will be looking at a couple of articles because you know one of the first things that you need to be able to do to write an effective literature review is being getting used to and becoming accustomed to analyzing and evaluating the literature that's already out there. Uh, so your second assignment will actually be in a sort of a systematic way, analyzing two journal articles, uh, reviewing two journal articles. Uh, the third assignment, which is due about halfway through the course, is an annotated bibliography where you are going to essentially write brief annotations for 15 to 20 um, journal articles that you found that are uh, focused upon the topic that you choose um, that will bring you essentially moving towards your um, literature review, your chapter two of your thesis. And then um, the final written one is a literature review, a 20 to 25 page literature review. Um, and we'll spend a fair amount of time in the first class sort of talking about what a literature review is and what it does. And really, I mean, that is the focus of the entire course. You'll submit this to me twice. The first time will be I think it's in week 11 or week 10 around there. Um, and that'll be a first, I call it a first draft, but essentially what I want is essentially the first half. Um, so I want about 10 or 12 pages by then so you can get feedback on those initial 10 or 12 pages. If you've got more, that's great. I'll provide feedback on whatever you submit to me. Um, but uh, 
you know, a, a, a 10 to 12 is the minimum that uh, will be due there. And then at the end of the semester, which officially is the 7th of December, uh, that's when your final version will be due. Um, in addition, there will be things that we'll be doing either in class or uh, you'll note when we get to the schedule there are some weeks where class doesn't meet, so we'll be doing online things that week. Um, and those things will be account for the last little bit of your grade. Uh, there's a couple of assignment notes there, uh, one of which I'll mention. Um, Make sure you become familiar with the APA publication manual. There's a number of resources in Blackboard uh, related to it. Particularly, there's an online writing lab from Purdue University that you should become very familiar with. Um, note, you know, that second item, up to 20% of the value of any assignment may be deducted for poor quality writing and or production. That includes non-adherence to APA. Um, you know, so make sure you become familiar with that and as we move through the course I'll be working with you on how to follow APA. Um, late, author late assignments require authorization and I'll tell you in advance that unless it is extraordinary circumstances or exceptional circumstances I generally do not accept late work. Um, so um, you know that's uh, a policy that I've had the entire time that I, I've been teaching in the academy in higher education and um, you know so now if you are one of those people that end up in that extenuating circumstances department feel free to you know reach out to me and I will be as accommodating as possible but um, for the most part you know it is um, well, as the syllabus suggests, they're an emergency situation kind of thing. Um, looking through, you'll see that the course policies, other than the attendance policy that you see in number one, should be fairly standard and you should be seeing uh, things about the Learning Student Learning Center, the academic integrity policy, um, plagiarism, you know, all that should be things that um, you've seen in other courses to date. Um, number six is something that you may not have and um, you know within a, a course that's focused upon research we'll be looking at and examining a number of issues related to education um, you know people are going to disagree sometimes about it um, you know I believe that the classroom should be a, an open environment for ideas and um, there will be times when I will express mine. There will be times when I actually express opinions that aren't necessarily ones that I hold, but ones that I'm expressing because I'm trying to encourage the discussion along. Um, you know, my goal with these types of things is to ensure that everyone feels like they can participate and that everyone has an opportunity to participate. and that people don't take things personally um, as we're you know, talking about some of these issues. Um, looking at the um, schedule here, um, something I just noticed I forgot to eliminate um, as I was going through and creating the new one. So the first topic, which is what we're going to start with uh, on Wednesday night, is um, essentially an introduction. We're going to start to look at an overview of, of the course and what literature reviews are in general. Um, I won't go through each of these weeks individually, but I will point at a couple of them, and I'll stress them again when we meet on Wednesday. Uh, the first is our second class, which is on the 16th of September. Um, we are meeting in the library that day. Kim uh, McCumber, who's the educational librarian, is going to take us through how to use the educational databases. Um, because parking can be a bit of a challenge on main campus, one of the things that um, uh, I've done to accommodate that a little bit is class will start at 5 p.m. as opposed to 4.30 p.m. Having said that, if I were you, I would still aim to be at Oakview by 4.30 so that way you can take the shuttle which will leave at about 4.40, 4.45 that will bring you over to main campus and deposit you probably about 400 feet away from the main entrance to the library at about two or three minutes to five. Um, so instead of having to deal with fighting for the parking over there that is the strategy that I would take if I were in your shoes. Um, we'll meet back in the classroom on the 26th or 23rd of um, for class number three and you'll see we're there again for class number four um, which is on the 30th which is also when your second assignment is due the first one is due on the 23rd 
the middle class in October, October 14th, we aren't meeting face to face that week. I will have a series of online things for you to do. The other reason we're not meeting is because you'll note the following week is when your annotated bibliography is due. And you'll see that there's a pattern throughout the course where the week before one of your bigger writing pieces are due, I try to ha not have class that week. Um, because it allows me to meet with students individually who need that kind of meeting, um, but also giving folks more time to write and sort of synthesize and analyze the, the literature that they're going through. So you'll see the same thing with class on November 4th It doesn't meet, and you'll note that on November 11th, the following week, is when the first draft of your literature review is due. Similarly, we don't meet on the 18th, um, but then we meet on the 2nd and then the 7th, which is a Monday. Um, so we don't actually meet that day, but that's when your literature review is due because that's the final day of the semester, um, of the 7th of December, and that's when the final item is due. And then at the bottom here, you've just got a bibliography of additional uh, resources beyond uh, the course texts that are related to literature reviews that I think you may be useful to. Uh, so that's about it. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I will see you all in class on Wednesday.